let me tell you for about half an hour about uh, a project that is linked to a project that has been discussed already many times <coughs> today, OpenStreetMap. So OpenStreetMap is just, as you'll see, <coughs> the follow-up of OpenStreetMap. So I suppose do I turn that on? Not working? Okay. Okay, thank you. So I tried to do uh, uh, content, but uh, I'll skip it and so you'll see. So you all know the sea. The sea is uh, roughly three quarters of the earth. And it's really important for sailors to know where to go. Uh, most of you don't know probably that uh, Christophe Colomb most probably had maps made by the Chinese but did not talk about because in such a case he would not have been the one discovering the US. But maps so are extremely important for everyone going on sea as well as for people going on earth. That is for sure. Today most maps are proprietary, both the sea actually also. Even though on in the in the US it's not the case because most of them are public data, so the maps are public too. But that's not what we know everyone, everywhere else in the world. Most of the maps are outdated because the sea floor is changing all the time. The same as the coast. The coast is changing. Not a lot, but part of it is changing. And every change is a problem, especially where there are uh, like hurricanes and so on. Updating map is really expensive and time consuming, especially with current process. And uh, most of the time, updating charts, even if they are done, is not done by the sailor themselves, because it's expensive. So most of the sailors, actually at least uh, leisure sailors, do sail with updated maps. That is a problem, because the rocks are there, but the sense that can be a problem is changing from place to place. So, what are the, the challenge? The, the depth of the sea uh, is known at many places, but not everywhere. As I said, most of the data can be very old, up to 200 years. They have been tracked and measured long times ago, and people saw that the the depths would not change, which is actually not the case. Uh, because the collection of the data is really expensive, the data is, does not exist at many places. But uh, people think that if they know the depths at some places, around these places, the depths should not be too different, which is not always the case. Um, uh, as I said, it's important for sailors all the sailors to know if their boat will go or not. Uh, if the process would change, then the, 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 the maps and the collection of the data could be cheap and could be relatively, re relatively easy, as we'll see. So just a few words about OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is a community database. So don't think of OpenStreetMap as a map but mostly, as you've been told, is a database, out of which uh, some maps are done, many different maps, many different uh, projections of the database are done. Some of them are uh, maps. It's already quite an old uh, structure. It is more than 10 years, more, nearly 15 years, more than 1 million contributors. It started because of license restrictions. So the legal questions are essential around OpenStreetMaps and all these maps questions. The first license of OpenStreetMap open was CC by SA, the same license as Wikipedia. But due to legal uncertainties, it has been changed to a new license, which is ODBL since 2012 and if people tell you that they've got good they've got good ideas and that they want to make a new license to share data try to convince them not to do and reuse that license uh, that license mainly is a copyleft license that engage and increase 
the, the, the chance that the data would be reused, possibly also for commercial use. So I've just taken one example of uh, a data close to the sea out of OpenStreetMap. That is the, the start of Nieport. So Nieport is uh, here. There are two parts. One uh, along the sea, it's uh, Nieport Bat, and one uh, deeper along the channel here, Nieport Stat, where there are the most of the ships. And uh, so this is what you can get on OpenStreetMap. You see that OpenStreetMap already provides mostly what you need as a driver. So I would suggest that you stop using Google Maps and start using OpenStreetMap, through which you can use through the easy application maps.me. I don't know if you've been told about that. Maps.me is a very simple application that runs on all this device, it's offline, it, it, it downloads all the data from OpenStreetMap and it provides very, in, in, uh, information, uh, very much information on top of that. Okay? So, you've been told about the association, the Belzern Association, that today exists thanks to Ben uh, and to the people, I was one of them, uh, under the umbrella of uh, Open Knowledge Foundation, which I want to thank today. So all of this has been told today by Ben, so I will skip it. So what about OpenCMAP? So as I've just told, OpenCMAP is just the just. Uh, that's a, <laughs> a short for uh, about 20% of the, the job could be done on OpenStreetMap because it's a grant. So we are left with about 80% of the, the globe. Uh, that will be done on open C map. So we've already the blue, so now we need to have all other information. We've got the costs, we've got already most of the signs, so you will see that the signs are already, so every C that you, every, all, all of these signs that you will see on a, on a normal C map, you will already see on open C map. Uh, but that's about all. You will see that on that map, uh, if I can get, um, if I can do a live demo, I'll see you. I'll, I'll show you more later today. But uh, I'll go on like that. So what is the Belgian coast? So the Belgian coast goes from here to here. So it's nearly. Uh, a rectangle of uh, what have I said? 65 kilometers on that in on that direction, on 35 kilometers in the other direction. So it's a quite small piece of uh, of the sea. Okay, even though it's quite changing. Not many people see that, but it's quite changing. Who is sailing on the? Who has ever been on the Belgian coast? Ah, to the Belgian coast. Okay, on the sea, on the Belgian coast. Who has seen that the floor is changing all the time? So if you try to sail to Dunkirk, let's go, let's try, you're leaving from Nieport, I've told you about Nieport, and you want to go to Dunkirk. Easy, piece of cake. So it's really, so this is about 20 kilometers, or let's say 30 kilometers. So easy, you did, you do it in one, in half a day. But, here, there are a lot of banks, so a lot of sand, and with the, avec la marée, <laughs> what do you say, marée? Tides. Oh, with the tides. So you can sometimes go <coughs> on top of it, and sometimes you cannot. And you know, all these sandbanks are moving all the time, and they don't show you where they are. That would be too nice. Okay. So today, so this is how I made the measurements, because thanks to OpenCMAP, it's really easy to plan your trip. Just go to map.opencmap.org and go to Tool Trip Planner, and you can plan your own trip. It's really easy, deadly easy. And I did two measurements, these, to get the information that was on the previous track. And here is the only track of the steps of the depths of the sea 
that you can find in, on the Belgian coast. Only one. So, or let's say two. One and a second one there. Only two tracks have been made recording the depths of the, net, of the, the ships that have been sailing that zone. So there are works to be done. That's the idea of the project. So those are the commercial lanes for commercial boats. Yes, yes, most of the time. So as I show you, it could be easy. So the the idea is the following: we should record, or in order to improve the depths of the maps, the maps of the depths, we should record at the same time the depths, the position of the boat, the date and time, and the boat conditions. So that is. So you can record, but the, the, the presentation will be provided and it's uh, CC by SA, so everyone can reuse it. And the boat condition, acceleration and angles. So that is a bit tricky. So the challenge are, these are uh, challenging because the boat should remain mostly, mainly vertical, because if it's not vertical, then the, the depths you measure is not vertical, but you would have to do a lot of corrections. And if the sea is a bit rough, which happens from time to time, the boat is going like that. So it can be difficult. So the, po the position of the sonder should always be known quite precisely too. The open street map process is the following. Uh, the idea is that you've got a sonder, so this is the, the apparatus that measures the depths. You've got the GPS that gives you the time and the position. And there is the Giro data that gives you the position and the orientation of the GPS. Then you go through uh, a bus that connects to other apparatus, for example, a computer or a recorder. And that goes then to the laptop and can be recorded. All, all the metadata can be provided, and all together, after processing, that goes to solve. This is the idea of open CMAP desk measurement. And you know what? Everything is working today. So the material, if you go to a, a shop, U-Ship uh, or any other, you will find that many standard material eco sounders that are sold today allow you to record the depths. Some are quite good, uh, but most of them are expensive, not to say extremely expensive. This one is cheap, 30 euro. It's made by the people behind OpenStreetMap. It costs 30 euro. I hope I could sell you some, but I haven't got any today. Uh, and it records what? It records everything coming out of the, the, the echo sounder itself. It has incorporated a six-axis gyro, so it measures everything related to the rotation and the angles. A real-time clock, and everything is open. Open hardware, open software, open firmware. And it does, on, it does only cost 30 euro. If you want to make money, just do electronic material for ships. Because most of the ships owner have money, be there, do they for pleasure or commercially, they have got a lot of money. So, and, the, and today's electronic equipment is expensive. So it's possible to, it, to do it at least five times cheaper, I'm sure. But, so that will be for my next slide. <laughs> okay, so uh, as I said, the, the process is completely accessible and it's already working in OpenStreetMap. It uh, integrates well into OpenStreetMap and you, as I'll show you, it's possible to upload the data. We'll do uh, with some uh, online activity possible afterwards. So if you go to that page, you will see uh, these information about acquisition, processing, and rendering of the information. And then you wonder, but that must already exist. And it does. It does. And that team uh, has existed for a long time. Uh, I was, I've been busy working on that project for, for about uh, six years, but not actively all the time. TeamSoft has been, uh, is a private project, publicly subsidized. So as I asked this morning, I don't understand why everything that is 
publicly subsidized is not free and <coughs> open data, open source, and open everything. But TeamSoft is financed by the European Commission, and it's not public nor free. <coughs> OK, so if you register, which I, which I, which I have done, uh, I should be able to upload the data. So you see that these are the data done by the people active in the TeamSoft project. So as it is not completely open nor completely free, it's not really complete either. On Belgium, though Belgium is here, you see that there are not many tracks. Every ship, every commercial ship is equipped with the, equi the, the equipment that could be part of the project. Most of them, as I said, would be interested in knowing more the, the, the depths. But we know that a lot of them are happy with the data they have already. Okay? So that is a project that exists. But if you want to get the, the data, you will see that um, today they have only small parts, small data, especially for in France, or small, some parts of Fran on the French coast. So why have I decided to start again with this project that I told you I was, uh, I've been uh, busy for more than six years? Because I decided this year to buy a boat. So today, oh, I've got a boat. So I decided to resume my project. But my boat is about that. So it's a uh, very nice little Archambault surprise. It's a regatta boat. But you know what? A regatta boat eels. So it's moving like that all the time. So it's a little tricky. Because, as I said, the sounder must be nearly vertical all the time. So either uh, students of mine and myself, we will, be, we will be clever. We will fix something at the rear of the boat that makes sure that the sounder is always vertical, which is tricky. It's possible. There exist a lot of such instruments for people moving around with cameras, these devices that make sure that the, the equipment is always vertical. So this is one way of doing. Or the other thing is put it behind that boat in, a, in another boat, a smaller one, that is always vertical. That is the idea. <laughs> <laughs> so let's the great boat, the large one, that is about seven meters and a half, pull the small boat. This one has been made by the Swede uh, eight years ago. And it was used to map the floor of uh, a lake in Sweden. So why not doing the same? And that was done using Arduino. So it's an uh, Arduino inside uh, a GPS and batteries and so on. And a friend of mine, I was busy uh, working with them, uh, did similar boats in uh, Brest to map the the area close to Brest, which, is, which was interesting because official maps are made also in Brest by SHOM, S-H-O-M. They, they are making the official maps and they were intrigued, intrigued and interested in what would the non-professional do. They asked a lot of questions <coughs> first uh, and did not believe that it would be possible to do something good, but then they had to change their mind. Even if you are not professional, but if you are a little conscious, you can do some good mapping. Okay? So with such a boat, what you can do, you can be systematic. You can, you, with a larger boat, you, you would go your way, but with such a boat that is piloted by GSM, which, is, which has its own propeller and, uh, and, uh, and also battery, you can decide to, to move uh, la like that and do a systematic measurement of anything about lakes, river and so on, which could be interesting for other people too. We'll discuss that too. So, just to, to have some more time to go and do some things online. So, if you want to do something, what could you do? So, you could uh, speak about the project because Mapping the sea could only be done if we crowdsource with enough people. Otherwise, it will be tough. 
But mapping the sea is not the only thing that could be important. Think. Today, Belgium uh, has two important harbors. One is, one is Antwerp, and the other one is Zeebrugge. Antwerp has a little problem. It's a very important commercial harbor, but in order to get to the open sea, you've got to go to and um, across the Netherlands. We pay every year more than 1 billion euro to go that. Nobody knows, because we've always done that. We've always paid, Belgium has always paid the Netherlands about 1 billion euro a year to go through the scale. And you know what? On top of that, every year, we've got to dig the scale. People from the Netherlands don't care because they don't want to go with big ships through Antwerp. They go to Rotterdam and they don't need that. That's why we built Zeebrugge. Because in Zeebrugge, we can go anytime and, uh, to, with larger ships. So it's a big problem. What if we knew, so we, we, so we, we spent two times. One time to pay the Netherlands to go through the Skelde and the other time to dig the Skelde. So it's about two times one billion euro. We could do something else with that money. Um, the same for the lakes and river in Belgium, especially Meuse, Skelde and so on. If we knew the depths much better, and we could all contribute. We could do. <coughs> we could maybe spend the money differently. <coughs> and there are many different, many other lakes and river, where, if we would work all together, we could collect the data, and that could be interesting. <coughs> interesting for everyone, knowing, willing to know the heights of the water, which is, remember, 1953, the heights of the water was a trouble. In the, in, that was the, the beginning of the Delta project in the Netherlands. And uh, there were 1,652 1, people who died in, uh, in February 1953, 26 in Belgium. OK, so any help would be welcome with coding, material support, finding schools, teams, or other fab labs that would like to build su such a uh, uh, do-it-yourself naval drone. So, about when speaking about drone, most people speak about aerial drone, not a nautical drone. And you can take any of these drones and explore your own lake. So, what about uh, open sea map today? Before going to the test, so I've just shown you uh, that um, things are available. So. This is part of the map with a track about the depths. Uh, so it exists and it's <coughs> working. So it's also linked, the open sea map I've not told you is linked to um, a, a very interesting wiki with every arbor, uh, at least in Europe. <coughs> and uh, and it, it, from open sea map, you can also export the maps. Uh, to use them on uh, on any device on the boats, and there are some that especially accept these maps. So I just wanted to finish with a a, pap a paper by Marcus by Marcus that has been published in a, a known gazette uh, about open sea map, and I could not finish before telling you that very soon we will speak again about that project and anything related to education and uh, digital at the end of the uh, month of August, where we'll train the teachers, the directors, and the decision makers. We'll first think, uh, inform them about uh, how to use com confidently uh, numerical and digital devices. Then on the 28th, we will train them uh, in, in these two schools. We hope to do uh, 80 trainings. And there will be a scientific conference at the Real Academy. And it's near, it will near, be nearly free. And everyone will get uh, also electronic device. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, help, please help uh, make sure water depths are measured by crowdsourcing. And I'm open to any questions before doing some 
if we've got time, some uh, interactive demo of OpenSIM. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicola. Any questions? Yes? Yeah, Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, I, I was uh, thinking like, um, uh, like um, videos, those uh, measurements should be open. Yes. Are some like, for instance, on the net, videos, or so the So the fact is, I've tried to use this data, but uh, so far I don't remember why, but I've not <coughs> been able to use the, these measurements. Yes, uh, I was not able, I was not, I tried, so it was Peter who told me about, so I tried to download the data, I don't remember at all for which reason, I was not able to get the data. There was again some strange legal reasons for which I could not get the data. Yes, but, uh, yes, but I, yeah. but maybe I did a mistake, but I did not. So the idea was to, reuse as many data as possible. So first, use the actual data of the maps. So we know that it's really tricky to use the maps that exist, because most, most of their data are uh, copyrighted, at least in our country, stupid countries, uh, stupid laws. <laughs> uh, yes. About? Oh, what, what is that? Ah, oui, oui. Wait, 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 Yes. 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 But I tried in mode net, but I really, I will try again, but... Uh, yeah. No, no, it was not a cache of format, because that I would manage. <laughs> but the legal point is too difficult to manage. Oh, it's really difficult. It takes a lot of time. So I just, yeah, yeah. So thanks again. So Emonet indeed is a provider of public and open data. Should be. What I don't understand is that these maps are public data in the U.S. They are not public data in our country. So if you go to uh, to one of these public data makers, which are still nearly paramilitary. So they get most of their money through the military. They tell you, but we need to get money because we build maps that we sell. And, so, and I said, OK, how much money do you get? So what percentage of your completed budget? Oh, less than 10, 20%. So get rid of the advertising budget, and you will get the money back. And provide the data for free, and you're at, at, uh, at the level. So, but. They, they've got to change their mind, and that is too difficult. But at least the French are open yet. So, some, um, so this is what you get on OpenStreetMap, or OpenCMap. Okay, and you see here mm, that, so you just go to OpenCMap, or map.opencmap.org, and here you see that uh, first, <coughs> You can, as OpenStreetMap, edit the map yourself and add everything that is interesting. The people behind OpenCMap have already added a lot of information. So by default, when you connect, you see all these little dots here. And these are the real-time trips of the boats, which are called uh, marine traffic. So these are a lot of data, which I will very soon do. So you see that a lot, there are a lot of boats. So let's come back to a lot of boats. A lot of boats. <laughs> so let's get rid of all these boats. <laughs> Up. No more boats. Take some time to refresh, I don't know. Hop, voila. So if you so you can get many different information which are 
So the artboard, for example, you can click and let's go for what is interesting for us. The depth. Uh, you see that it's difficult. Ah, it takes. Okay. In Germany, there are some data. No wonder why, because Marcus is German, and most of the, and the German community behind OpenStreetMap is really active. Okay, so most of the data concerned with the depths and the measurement of the depths are German. So if we go to Belgium, let's say, let's see the Belgian coast, or at any other place than these. Uh, the, the place around Germany, you see that in uh, the Zuiderzee, it's okay, starting to be good. There are recordings. Okay, there are recordings. I don't know why it does not come at that. Uh, so you see that there are okay, here we see the recordings, not always. All these little dots are the information about the, the arbor, where there are quite a lot of information. So it's, and if we go to Belgium, then you see what I've shown you, that there is, there is nearly nothing. So that is Belgium. So we've got a lot of work. But thanks to the fact that um, Open sea map Belgium exists, we could ask for money for Van Vlaanderen to, <laughs> to help us. Yes. Yes. Huh? So I, I talked already to Mr. Van de Lannot, who is Burgmeister de Ostend, and he told me, oh, yes, that could be interesting. So I told him that he could pay, then he had to move. <laughs> okay. So, um, voila. So if you want to know more about the other projects, so this is the project, so every link will be included. Uh, this is the project uh, that has been done uh, eight years ago. With the, so the idea is to have a logo, uh, a robo that would measure the depths of the lake. Uh, and this is the, the page where you can upload the data. So as I wanted to show you, Everything is already in place, so if you've got data, you can upload them. This is uh, uh, more information about the, the work of that little... And this is about so the, the proprietary... Uh, so there it's possible to download some of the data and to view... But here you see that you've got... French charts, Lithuanian charts, which is of little help for Belgium, UK charts, and US charts. So <coughs> hopefully once it will be possible. And one thing that people should know is that there, there is a, so opencpn.org. OpenCPN is a software that runs on uh, many different uh, platforms, uh, on uh, Arduino, on Windows, Macintosh, Linux, and on, uh, on, on telephones and tablets. And that replaces all the proprietary, proprietary software uh, to sail with. And it's really quite powerful, really powerful. It, uh, it allows today to read proprietary maps, but it also, it, uh, allows to read uh, these maps, which I have not shown you, that uh, it's possible to export the maps um, to... Uh, and one thing that is also interesting here, if you want to go, where is it? The meteo, pop, 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 uh, weather. If you are online, which is not always possible when you are away on the sea, otherwise it's a little costly, it's possible to have quite a lot of information. So if you are sailing close to the coast, you get the, a network, a good network, a cheap network everywhere. 
uh, by G4 or Wi-Fi in the harbor. And then you can get through OpenSea map a lot of information about the weather. So this is made for sailors by sailors. Thank you.